Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, ladies. We're gonna drift a little bit, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, I just did a video and I liked it. I mean, it was going so well. And then I hit the wrong button trying to put you all on pause. <sighs> and because I hit the wrong button, we're going to end up getting to this right here. Um, I spelled it wrong, and that's because I'm about three and a half feet away from the computer. Yeah, I have the um, I have the freezer for my house, and I have the freezer, and for me, the freezer comes in handy. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I pulled up the word testament. We're going to cover a couple of things, and we're going to come back to testament, but what I want you guys to understand is this one right here. I You saw I was just on covenant. I knew that covenant meant testament. We're going to talk about this later. And there's a reason why I'm bringing this up. Now, it says in biblical use. No, in original use. Okay? Because biblical use was 4375 BCE. Okay? that That's when it was used originally. So, we want to say that if it's ancient that a testament or covenant equals the same thing. So when you have the New Testament, it actually means New Covenant. If you have the Old Testament, it means Old Covenant. Now, if you don't believe me, go back, read the book of Luke, where Jesus says, I'm glad we had this opportunity to eat this meal. I've waited a long time, and I established this covenant with you. Okay, covenant, promise, and agreement. It's more of a promise when it comes to the scripture than it is anything else. Again, an attestation, a promise. Okay? Now, we're going to leave that alone for a second because we got to talk. And we got we got our boys in the background because they're drifting. And we don't want to drift too far. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, I got a little story for you. And I hope that some of you are able to hear this story and get something out of it because it's one of those stories. Um, we have two people. We're going to put my uh, brothers on pause, Isley brothers, and we're going to move forward with the conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, this story is about a young man. We're going to call his name Robert. And Robert is married to Mary. Make it simple. So to remember everybody. Although Mary is not going to have too much of a role in this story. Sorry. It is a man's world! Okay. Ladies and gentlemen. Mary and Robert have just gotten married. As a matter of fact, they've been married for a full year. They have saved up their monies. They have both fixed their credit. Because they knew when they got married, they were going to need a home. And they were going to make sure that both their salaries was enough to stay in that home. And that they were going to have enough monies on hand to have reserves when they purchased the home. Now, Robert has occasionally gone online doing his research because he needed to find out about mortgages and what's the best rate and how the whole process was. Because it's something he had never done before. And here he is as being the head of the household, thinking it's his responsibility to make sure that he doesn't make any mistakes because any mistakes falls on him. His conscience will not let him live otherwise. So, Mr. Robert sees a video on YouTube and he realizes, wait a minute, that can't be true. So Mr. Robert decides he's going to do more research and he goes to other locations and other sources and he finds out that there's a problem and as he realizes that there's a problem 
he decides that he's going to go talk to the realtor. He's not going to, he doesn't want to startle his wife. He doesn't want to cause her to be alarmed. And so what does he do? He literally goes, sits down, and says to the realtor, her name is Jane. The realtor, they have not known her for very long. She's just a realtor to them. But they've been dealing with her and working with her and asking a lot of questions. And the home that they're buying, their credit is pretty good. So he goes and he sits down and he talks to her. He says, uh, Jane, I have a question. Do you have time? Oh, sure. I got the afternoon free. I, I, nobody else is going to be here today. This is an easier day for me. This is one of my slower days. So, no, I got time. He says, well, thank you. I, I only have a couple of questions. As you know, this is our first home. And I just want to make sure everything goes right. And I, I don't want to make any mistakes, you know, because I've, I've seen the stories and heard of so many people making mistakes when buying a home. And I don't want to be one of those people. Oh, sure. I know what you're talking about. You know how many people I see make mistakes all the time? So I'm very grateful that you guys are mindful of there are mistakes that can be made and that you're coming to me looking for advice. So what is it I could do for you, Robert? Well, Jane, I, I, I got a question and I just want to, I just want to verify that I'm understanding correctly. So if, if I understand it correctly, the way it happens is my wife and I, we come to you and we apply for a loan. And then you run a credit check on us to make sure that we are earning enough and that our credit profile is good enough. And then once you make sure our credit profile is good enough, then you will tell us how much we qualify for. And you usually don't give us the max that we qualify for because you don't want to max us out to where we go into default. There'd be a lot of problems if that was to happen. And so you give us the price and then you tell us, hey, happy home, honey. And we go out there and we look for a home. And we're competing with others depending on the market. And we come back and we say, hey, we found this home. We, we are interested in it and we need you to make a bid on it. And the realtor says, sure. And they make a bid on the home and we get the bid. And so it's going to be our home. But you tell us before we can get the home, hey, we got to do a bunch of inspections. This has to be inspected. That has to be inspected. So we get the things inspected and we pay for all of the inspection fees and so forth, which is big business in this country, huh? <laughs> sure it is. Now, after we do that, we paid all the fees. Sometimes realtors, they're nice, and they'll say, well, they will cover part of the closing costs that dealt with inspection and all of that. And But you're, you're not doing that. So, you know, but no, no, we're not holding that against you. We understand that some people are greedy. Oh, I'm, did I say that out loud? I, I'm sorry. No, no, I didn't mean that. I apologize. No, I, I promise you, I did not mean that. Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, now, after that, after the inspections and everything is paid for, then we come back to you and you say, hey, the loan has funded. We, we'll be doing this closing tomorrow afternoon, so we'll just need you guys to come back here tomorrow and do the closing. We'll hand the keys to you. And so we come back the next day, and you notify us because we ask you, because that's what we do. We, we we're curious. Hey, has the other, the seller, has they, have they been paid? And you, you assure us that they have been paid. The funds have been deposited into their account. Okay. And so all we have to do now is just sign the papers. And you say, yes, all you have to do is now is sign the papers. And we, we sign the papers. And you say, okay, here are your keys. Well, my, my problem is in the simple understanding of things. The contract that we're signing, we're putting our home over as collateral. Well, no, that's one of the contracts. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I understand. I understand the two contracts. There, there's one is the mortgage and the other one is the loan agreement itself. Um, and no, I understand. And one of them allows it to be traded on the market and all of that. We get that. But I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is that when we come to the closing, and you guys call it the closing, when we come to the closing, we don't get our keys until we sign the papers. Is this correct? Well, yeah, sure. That that's the way things work. Okay. Hmm. That doesn't that doesn't quite make sense. Oh, what part of it doesn't make sense? I mean, I mean, you you can't get the keys until you actually uh get the loan, right? And and then the home and everything. So you can't get the keys until you actually sign the contract. No, no, no. I I I I understand the need for signing contracts, but the problem is we've already signed for the loan. That's how it's funded. 
is because we signed for it. But at closing, we're signing other documents, making other promises or covenants and so forth, and I'm not understanding that. Well, what are you talking about, sir? I'm not understanding where you're coming from. Okay, let me ask you. If at closing, the other party's already been paid with the loan that you've given us for our home, um, why do you not give us the keys until after we sign those papers? Well, that's so we can guarantee that we're going to get paid back. What do you mean? Well, okay, let's say we gave you the keys in advance of signing the papers, and then you said you're not going to sign, and you never pay back the loan. Then we're out of that money. Well, yeah, but do you not understand where I'm coming from? How can we sign papers putting our home up as collateral when we don't have possession of it, when we haven't taken possession of the home? We don't have possession of the home. We haven't received the home yet. It's not ours. Well, it is yours. It's on, yours on paper. Yeah, that's, it's ours on paper. Okay, so if it's our home on paper, then why do you have the keys? Well, we have the keys because you gave us permission when you signed the papers. Yes, the papers for the loan. And did you explain that to us? We don't have to explain that to you. That's just the process. That's just the way it is. Oh. Sir, if you're thinking, if, if you're having second thoughts about all of this, and if, if this is too much for you, then maybe you should go and talk to a lawyer or something. Maybe this is not, uh, maybe this is not what you need. This, maybe this is not for you. No, no, no. I, like I said, I just have questions. Well, these questions, uh, these are not normal questions. I don't normally get questions like this. So you, you're making me feel kind of uncomfortable. I'm making you feel uncomfortable. Do you want me to go sit on the other side of the room? No, I, and it's not, not that type of uncomfortable. It's just your questions, they don't seem like they're, they're, they're going anywhere. Okay, let me see if I can put this a different way because I think that you're misunderstanding me. Okay, in, in contract law, and I don't, I'm not a lawyer, okay, but I understand just a little bit about contract law. In contract law, there is this thing called consideration and value. And so, so when we signed the papers, we were supposed to receive the value. Well, you did. That's what the funding of the account was. That's so that the other party got paid. Okay, that's okay. Now, oh, that's exactly my point. The other party gets paid. Okay, so when do we get consideration for that payment? What are you talking about? Well, if the other party got paid, they got paid as a result of a loan that you're giving us. What you've given us to which they got paid Where's our consideration? Where is our keys? Where's our possession of the home? Well, you get that after you sign the papers. Exactly, after we sign the papers. So how can we sign over our property, which we've never received, and that in law be constituted as legal? What are you talking? Okay, you see your car sitting out there in the, in the parking lot right there, right in front of your building? Yeah. Okay, okay, let me see. You can have this vehicle for $800 free of charge. Okay, there you go. I'm paying you for your car. Now I'm going to go up and give me the keys. Sir, what are you talking about? Well, I just paid you for your car. Now just give me the keys and I'll, I'll be gone. What, that does, what, what are you talking about? Well, you guys are saying that if I sign some papers, I get my keys. Without any consideration. Okay, so fine. I'm going to do the same thing with your car. I don't have possession of your car, but I'm just going to sign some papers and I'm just going to take the car. Is that all right? And then I'll call the police and have you arrested. How could you have me arrested? Because that's stealing. Okay, so like I said, bear with me, I'm not being argumentative. I'm just asking a question. If you all are having us sign a paper, and getting a loan for a home, and then you fund that home, pay the seller, and then you hold on to our keys and don't give them to us unless and until we sign these other papers agreeing to place our property as collateral. That's called ransoming. 
Is it not in law? And if that's the case, then that's illegal from the standpoint of the law. Well, no, 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 no. It's not illegal because we do this all the time. Every every single loan is done this way. I don't even know. What 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 are you? Why are you? See, uh, wait, hold on. You, your, your question doesn't seem, it, it's irrational and unreasonable. Okay, what's so unreasonable about me asking questions that's specific to my loan? I'm not asking hypotheticals. I'm asking about the process. How can you have us sign away our home before we've taken possession? If we don't have possession of it, then it's not ours. Possession is nine-tenths is the maxim. So a possession is nine-tenths. How can I sign away my property if I've never taken control, never taken possession? No, because we take possession on your behalf. Well, when did you notify me that you were going to be acting on my behalf with my property? I don't remember doing that. Because once I sign those papers, oh, then you're free to do with the property whatever you want, except sell it without paying you, correct? Yeah, because that's the way it works. Okay, so then that means it's not my property. If I'm not free to do whatever I want with the property, you are free to do whatever you want. You can make improvements and you can sit up there and take out a second mortgage, but just can't sell it. You see, that limitation right there, that means it's not my property. That means it belongs to someone else. See, if I can't sell what belongs to mine, that means it's not mine. No, it's not yours because you signed it over as collateral. Yes. Only because you wouldn't give me the keys unless I signed it over as collateral. No, that's not the way. That's not how it is. Of course it is. You have just told me that if I got a loan from you, you're not giving me no keys until I sign some extra papers. That I'm applying for a loan. There is no law saying I have to leave collateral. I'm applying for a loan. When I apply for a loan dealing with my credit cards, I don't have to leave correct a collateral because that's all the credit card is, is them loaning money to me. So you're saying that I can't get the loan unless I sit up here and uh, sign over my life. Sir, it's not like that. It's not even that serious. Sign over your life. That metaphor don't even fit the conversation. Oh, yes, it does. Because you're saying that I have to be indebted to you for over 30 years. Of course it means my life. That's my entire rest of my life is signing over this. And that's my happiness and everything else. I, like I said, my problem is that you people are holding on to our keys and not giving it to us unless we sign some papers. Okay? That's illegal. No wonder nobody else is there so that there are no other witnesses. You are holding on to the keys, telling us that we're not going to get the keys unless we sign some papers. And if we sign the papers, we have to agree to put our house up as collateral. When that wasn't initially, pay attention, the application for the loan. Our application for a loan, we were approved without collateral. Go ahead. Go back and take a look. You approved us for this loan without us putting down any collateral. And then after we agreed that you would give us the loan without any collateral, then you were forcing us to give you collateral. Okay, that seems to be illegal. And I just on it. Oh, oh, look at that. I got a phone call coming in. The phone ain't rang. Oh, no, no, it's about to ring. Trust me, it's about to ring. See, told you it was going to ring. Okay, thank you. Hold on, I've been waiting for this call. All right, you have a good day. We'll talk again. Oh, yes, oh, I'm so busy. I'm so swamped. I have so much to do today. Wait, hold on. Oh, yes. Oh, how you doing? Oh, no, I have a client right here, but he's just leaving. No, no, yeah, he had some problems or whatever, but we resolved this problem. He on his way. Okay, see you next week. Okay, bye-bye. Tell your wife I said hello. All right, bye-bye. Okay, yeah, what can I do for you? Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, close to no. Yeah, there, thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, uh, yeah, oh, God. Okay, you just just, just stay here for a second. He, he's on his way out. I'm so glad that you got my message. Oh, God, that, this one was something else. He's asking me all kinds of questions. Oh, no, I didn't answer them questions. You know how we're supposed to do things. God wasn't going to ask his, no, not them questions. 
Uh, okay. Now nah, he's gone. I just seen him drive away. All right. Now you take care. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye. Ladies and gentlemen, this happens every day. This happens every month, every week, every hour, every year. Where the banks give loans to people, tell people that their loans have funded, and then force them to place their homes as collateral for the loan. Now remember, they got the loan initially without collateral, based on their credit. If you don't believe me, go take a look. Go take a look at the process you've gone through. There was no mention of you having to put up the new home as collateral because guess what they can't do? They can't make you put up something you don't own, that you don't possess nor can they anticipate in the future your possessions and the value of your possessions. They don't have that authority. That would make it an invalid contract because you cannot promise thin air. You can always promise to pay, but you cannot promise to put up as collateral something you don't own. And at the time that they issued a loan, tell you that you qualify for the loan, qualify people without collateral that you qualify for the loan, then how in the world do they sit up there and tell you, oh, well, let's fund it and everything. The, the seller got paid, but you don't get the keys until you sign them papers right there. That's extortion, people. Now, I, I, I'm not telling any of you to go into court and say extortion. I'm telling you to understand what's been going on for decades. I've been saying this since 2012. Go back. Listen, I've been saying it since 2012. There is something very, 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 very fishy and death smelling in Denmark. Sorry, Denmark. Okay. Something ain't right here. How in the world, and that this is the question because it's the best question in the world. How in the world can they sit up there and hold on to your keys? And tell you, oh, no, you ain't getting until you sign them papers. If it's your house, if the seller has been paid, okay, the seller has been paid, they've given him the money, then why are they holding on to your keys? Of course you signed papers saying they could do that and you didn't realize it. But then that's where the truth in advertising and the truth in lending comes in. It's called the Truth in Lending Act and the Truth in Advertising Act. Oh, yes, realtors, they advertise. They market themselves out there, which means they're required to be upfront about everything. Sorry, they're not used car salesmen. They're required to be upfront with everything. Why do you think they make you do all them inspections and everything? Because there are so many federal laws that they must comply with. Ladies and gentlemen, let's do this again because some of the smart people won't get it. At the closing, the house has already been paid for. The loan has already been funded at the closing. Now, in California, they have this process. Now, let me tell you, once you all, everybody who doesn't live in California, pay attention in California to get around this logic, in California to get around this conundrum, in California to get around this illegal activity. They don't fund the loan until you sign the papers. Here's the problem. If they don't fund the loan until you sign the papers, then that's illegal. Why? Because you don't own the home, so you can't put it up as collateral. But they won't fund it until you sign. In other states, you sign the papers, they've already funded the loan. Do you guys see the illegality of this whole process? And this happens every day. The courts know about this, the banks know about this, and nobody's doing nothing about it. So we did the video, ladies and gentlemen, about fraud upon the court. All of you who've been foreclosed upon, go back into the court, bring up the issue of fraud upon the court and fraud upon your person. You can prove fraud because the Truth in Lending Act says that they must be upfront with you about these things. They must let you know. Then you let them know the logic behind it. Darn it, I couldn't put up the home as collateral even if I wanted to. 
which means that even if they wanted to enforce that contract, they could not because it's an unenforceable contract. See, the maximum equ equity, it's called an equi equitable maxim. Okay? The maximum in equity is the courts cannot encourage and or sponsor and or support a wrongdoer and or wrongdoing. They don't have the ability or authority because they are courts of equity. That's the first thing. Second thing, pay attention because some of y'all ain't gonna be paying attention to this. Second thing, you have to figure out your arguments. Fraud upon the court, ladies and gentlemen, you, bringing in a motion for fraud upon the court, there are no fees. They cannot give you a fee for bringing that to the court's attention. Now, look, there is a whistleblower's statute, and I cannot tell you because I don't know which one this one is, but there is another statute that if you bring to the attention of the United States government something that shows that they have been bulked and built out of so much money that you get a percentage. That is what the video on the young lady uh, who did the common law set off, that's what she did. There must be something that allows you to bring forth this fraud in banking before the government. Don't go into court. File your complaint with the risk management department for your state government. File your complaint with the governor's office. Contact the governor's office and ask them, where do you go to file such a complaint? And if they can't give you an answer, then tell them that's impossible because this is the state government and these are banks that are licensed under the state government doing business within this state. And if they are violating the law, of course you must have a mechanism for me to file a complaint. Now, some of you didn't understand what I just said. You just have to understand the words. You can say word for word to them. They understand. You have a right to make a complaint to government. They cannot stop you. That's your right, not your left, not your off, not your on. That's your right. And most of you don't know anything about exercising rights. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, how could you sign for that home? How could you put it up as collateral if you didn't own it? Like I said, when I first got started in law was with this word right here, about seven years old. And that word was being talked about in the Kingdom Hall. And they were talking about the definition and how the word translated covenant and how many of the modern Bibles use the word testament. Don't know, I can't tell you where that tradition started because it's been so long, but I do know what a covenant is in a testament. It is a legal and binding agreement. You don't believe me? Okay. Something that serves as a sign or evidence of a specific fact, event, or quality. A person's will, especially the part relating to personal property. Hold on now. In the Bible, a division of the Bible. See, Old Testament and New Testament. Ah, but it also, in Bible use, biblical use, a covenant or dispensation. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what the word testament means. It means covenant. So it's the old covenant and the new covenant. Covenant is a, a promise. There was an agreement, but a promise for the most part, because the promise was, if you do this, then I'll do this. It's called a performance agreement. He told the people, if you will strictly obey my voice, if you strictly obey my commandments, if you strictly obey my word, then I will not do this and none of this will happen. An act which a person determines the disposition of his or her property after death of a testament of property. That's why you'll see in some Bibles, it talks about uh, in the book of Hebrews that a covenant is not established without a human testator or testator. Okay? That was the point. A covenant is not put into force without blood. Wait a minute. Y'all didn't get that? No, no. Y'all didn't understand that. Each covenant that you see referenced in the Bible, 
someone's death was associated with it. That's what Paul is saying. There had to be a death. The covenant God made with the people was someone taking an animal, sacrificing and taking the blood and putting it on some hyssop and sprinkling it up on the people. The other covenant, it was called the Passover covenant, was that he would not destroy any of the Israelites if they sprinkled blood of the sacrificial animal, the lamb, on the doorpost of their home. There, every covenant, there had to be the death of a covenanter or a testator. Someone had to die. Blood had to be spilled. Every single covenant that you see in the Bible. I believe the Bible lists about seven covenants. Now, so that you guys will know, we got the fact that testament and covenant means the same thing. Okay? Last will and testament. That's because the people today created that. But pay attention. The most famous testament are the two parts of the Christian Bible, the old and new. No, right here. Watch this. I love this. Definition of testament at dictionary.com. Either of the two major portions of the Bible, the Mosaic and the Old Covenant or disposition, or the Christian or New Covenant or dispensation. I said disposition, sorry. Dispensation. Initial capital letter. The New Testament. Now, initial capital letter. That's interesting. I, ladies and gentlemen, I think, look, this thing from the Old Testament, initial capital letter. See that right there? I think this might have something to do with the way our names are spelled. It says initial capital letter. I, I don't understand why that would be there. Well, first, we're going to go to the dictionary.com. I'm sorry. This is how my mind works. My mind. My mind's telling me, yeah, yes. But my body. Sorry, got to go back to my music so I don't do that no more. Whew. It ain't letting me go nowhere. It's stuck. And it has been stuck for a minute. Okay, there we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the getting back to mortgages, those are contracts, ladies and gentlemen. As we said on the video yesterday, we say on this video, a contract is not enforceable if a party is unaware of what's going on. Okay. Pay attention. Come on now. Get right there. I like this one right down here. We're going to start. A covenant, especially between God and humans. A copy of the New Testament. Initial capital letter. Initial capital letter. The New Testament. Initial capital letter. Ladies and gentlemen, that doesn't make sense, though. Why does it say that? Okay. This is how my mind works. My mind says, what the, what that there, what, why, why that there? Okay. See, it did letter, and I don't want letter. I want initial capital letter. I want to know what that statement means. Because I know that statement has meaning. Not only did they put it in parentheses, but they noted twice that statement. Oh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to... God, I get It's not letting me highlight and copy. That's the point. See, it's allowing me to click on something, and I don't want to click. I, you know what? I know how I'm going to get that. Hold on. You want to play with me? I'll play back. Somebody help him because he's living. Okay. Said I'm. Um, he's living, y'all. For what? Each and what? Y'all, y'all hear him? Each and every day. I, I hope neither, neither of them brothers is still in, uh, incarcerated. Now, I'll do a video later about the incarceration issue. Let's go ahead and do this. I'm using this particular browser. Uh torch but google as of august says that they're not going to even let torch do anything or the other browsers that are google based browsers uh oh specific initials and an illuminati manuscript okay interesting an initial is often several lines in height and 
an older full scene as known as inhabited initials. I, I'm just going to send y'all how to capitalize first letter only. Do you see what I'm saying? Initial capital letter. I think this does have something to do with the name, ladies and gentlemen. See, I didn't ask it. I said initial capital letter. Initial capital letters are used more strongly today than in the past. And keeping with the modern trend towards using less pronunciation. The bank, the company, the board. Although some capitals are still used for respect, indigenous, their use is the, has declined. Other use of initial capitals that is declining is the use of title case for Haydens. Okay. I uh, I told you it had something to do with the names. We keep I keep calling it the upper lower case, where the first one is upper, and so that's the way I refer to it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I do hope the information about mortgages and how mortgages are done has caused some of you to realize some things about the process. You must understand if you don't have ownership of something then you don't have the right to sell it. Go ahead. If you didn't understand it, I purchased a scooter when I was about 19 years old, and I trusted the individuals. It turns out the scooter was stolen because I didn't do my due diligence, and I spent the night in someone's jail as a result of that stolen scooter. But the person who got it back got it back with a brand new engine because they had blown the engine out on it, and I had a brand new engine put in the scooter and I talked it up to experience okay ladies and gentlemen I know contracts because I focused on contracts in the very beginning go back take a look at most of the videos I've ever done we're talking about one type of an agreement or another that's the highlight of the videos that's the highlight of everything that I do even all the stat packs everything's a contract because, oh, I'm sorry, did I not tell you that everything is contract? Everything is contract. I've known this all my life because I saw contract everywhere. Everything is by way of agreement. Nothing happens without agreement. Just like I make these videos and you, by watching them, have agreed to watch them. Even in the Bible, Job, you remember Job, the one who lost all 10 of his children? Job said, he has made a contract with his eyes not to look at a virgin woman. Why? Because he was married. Everything is contract, ladies and gentlemen. That's all you need to do is you need to understand. So once you understand that everything is contract, then you have to understand what a contract is and what a contract is not. Now, finally, finally, just so that you guys will understand. As we told you in the last video, this PDF section is up. Now, some of you will get the picture, some of you won't get the picture. Sorry, there is a picture in this setting. Some of you will get the picture, others will not get the picture. Get the picture? <laughs> okay, the picture is not the important part. The important part is that you're able to scroll and you're able to use the search bar within the site. Uh, let's see. I just put the word earn. I don't know what's going to come up with earn. And I didn't say earn with a U. I said earn with an E. Well, look at that. Earned income credit. Information to claim earned income credit. Look at that. Already have a form up there on our website for it. Okay. I just need to let you guys know there's a ton of information up there and if you're searching for something I would search here especially if it involves some type of way of getting access to something again this only searches www.sacom911.com forward slash pdfs this 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 what is this sacom911.com forward slash pdfs this 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 okay you don't have to do the html watch this html I got rid of the HTML, I hit enter, 
Just waiting on it. Wait, hold on. Al Green? No, uh-uh. We ain't doing that one. I don't want to do You Bring Me Up by the Commodores. I don't want to do On My Own by Patti LaBelle. I don't want to lose your love, y'all. See, sorry, this is not... You got to do the HTML. I just realized you got to do the HTML. Dot HTML. Got to do the HTML to get to the search. Sorry. I apologize. I didn't know. Just realized that now... So now if I realize it, you realize it, but you'll still get the same PDF section. It's just the other one has a search bar. Now this one has a search bar if you did control F. So either way, it's the same thing. Same thing! You know what I'm saying? The one with the picture just looks a little bit more um, elegant. This one looks so plain. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, ladies, ladies and gents, we have all kinds of information on here about mortgages, about contracts. And please understand, once you understand what a contract is, and who can and cannot enter into a contract, and what constitutes and does not constitute a contract, then you will know that anybody who wants to claim that your contract is bogus is speaking out the side of their neck. That's why we added arbitration clause to our contract, because the law says only the arbitrator gets to determine whether the contract is valid when it has a valid arbitration clause. To this day, no one has ever proven that the arbitration clause is invalid. Go ahead. Look at all the cases where the judges have said all kind of stupid things. And that's right. I said stupid things. I'm not afraid of them. I don't care about them. I don't care about their opinion. They come at me with law, not case law. Case law is not law. Case law is coleslaw. It's that that you, you, you put off the side of your neck. Okay? Nobody cares about no coleslaw. Okay? So we care about the law, not statute. Statute ain't got nothing to do with this. The law has everything to do with it. So I care about the law. I don't care about case law. Case law means nothing to me as a person. Why? Because case law is some idiot's opinion. Everybody has an opinion, especially those idiots. Why do you call them idiots? Because they sit up here and act like we don't have any recourse as to what's going on, that they can do whatever they want. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm saying no. I'm saying go back in the court. Go back and do a motion fraud upon the court. Do your research about fraud upon the court. Get your redress, people. They cannot stop you from getting your redress. By the way, so far I have seen the Supreme Court looking favorably towards these arbitrations and these arbitration contracts. I've looked at a couple of cases. So I'm just waiting for the time for us to bring it to the Supreme Court's attention. We're not there yet. We still have paperwork that we need to process. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got the emotions and they say they don't want to lose. So while they're not losing, we're going to have this tornado, hurricane, and huge storm warm us and cool us down. Uh, warm and cool oh lordy it is 93 degrees right now people 93 degrees okay it doesn't feel like 93 degrees it says that it's gonna be 102 degrees well i know it was 102 yesterday i don't think it's gonna get to 102 today i don't think so uh and yesterday it got to 99 even though it was 102 outside it got to 99 only it didn't get over 100 so uh nearby it got over 100 but not here where i'm living did it get to 100 there you know i do know that there are a couple of days that we actually got to 114 110 i do know that there were some days that that happened but i promise you it didn't feel like it just like I'm waiting for the winds to start blowing. This is about a, about another 30 minutes. The winds will start kicking in, and I'm going to enjoy my air conditioning because that's my air conditioning until I get the solar panels. Now, many of you have been asking, wondering about the solar panels. Ladies and gentlemen, all 10 of them are right here. 2.4 kilowatts worth of power. It's just I haven't figured out how I'm going to, where I'm going to put them because I don't want to have to put them where I have to move them. So I think I will do five and five. I think I will do five facing the morning and five facing the evening. 
so that I can maximize the sun. And I will work it out somehow. Don't know how I'm going to do it. I promise you, I don't know how I'm going to do it. There is a calculation that I can do online that will tell me exactly how to position. I haven't looked at it yet. I will be looking at it. That's why I'm mentioning it. And then I got to figure out how to hook up the charge controller, the uh, converter dropping down from 48 volts to 12 volts, because that's what I'm going to have to do in order to hook up the 12 volt system in this uh, vehicle. So I will be putting that together right now. I went up, there is a vent. And if you guys don't know much about RVs, there is a vent that had a vent lid that had broken because of years of the sun beating up on it. Well, this vent had to be replaced. And I just got up there this morning and I chiseled everything off because when they replace them, they put uh, pretty much like a sealant or silicon up there to keep it from leaking. And so I went up there this morning and I don't do well with heights because there is a equilibrium issue that comes with muscular dystrophy. And so trust me, and I'll say this because who else will tell you something like this? I went up and down on that roof four times this morning. Each time I went up and down that ladder was I worried. The first time I forgot to bring my cell phone with me. Why you gotta bring your cell phone up on the roof? Up on the roof! Ladies and gentlemen, the reason why you bring your cell phone when you're going up on a roof of anything is just in case you fall, you want to be able to call for help. There was no traffic. I've only seen three cars come down the street today. Normally, there's at least 20. There was no traffic this morning. Did not see one car the entire hour and a half that I was up and down that ladder. Not one car come by. So that's why you want to bring your cell phone, especially when you're over in an area where I am. So my that's my rule. My rule is safety first. So I wear slippers all the time, easier on the feet. As a matter of fact, my shoe size used to be 11 and a half. Since I stopped wearing shoes, my shoe size now is 13. Okay, hey, don't, you just got to understand, shoes constrict the feet. Without the constriction, the feet are allowed to grow at their normal pace. So, but I had to put on my actual shoe shoes to get up there. Why? Because no slipping, no falling. Sandals and slippers, that's why they're called slippers, people. No, 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 no. Go on back and, go on back and rethink it. Slippers are called slippers for a reason. Oh, jeepers. Okay, they're they're called that for a reason. So going up and down wasn't fun. And it was enough to have me be extremely cautious. But I had my Bluetooth speaker, the one that you guys are listening to. I had that up there with me so that I could listen to my music while I was working. Listen while you work. Okay. And because I had those, hey, Marvin got a question for y'all. He's been wanting to ask y'all this for a while. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to leave the conversation about what I was doing up on the roof and all that stuff. That's gone. Y'all have a very good day. Me and Marvin, we're going to take a little trip down memory lane. All of y'all, please understand, ever since I started doing videos this way with the Bluetooth speakers, not a single, pay attention, not a single hit by YouTube for copyright. But when I do it and show it on the computer, every single video, copyright, 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 copyright. So you're going to be hearing a more a lot, a lot more of the Bluetooth. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to escalate, okay, because war is the answer. Got to go. Take care of yourselves. I do hope you pay attention to the rental, mortgage, that stuff, all of those agreements. I really hope you guys paid attention. All right. Thank you for listening to my story. But we got to do what we got to do. And that's we got to go. Bye-bye. Adios. Sister.